Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long, uh, Legendary Iron Man, Return of the Exquisite uh, Timing. This is uh, Saiken and I'm trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with the Exquisite Timing achievement, meaning we got to beat it in four and a half months or uh, below. That's my world's first attempt uh, to see if that's even theoretically possible. So far we're doing incredibly well. It's a beginning to mid of April, so second month, and we got this here would be our third engineer. We already got three scientists. We are okay on Intel. Um, we got a couple of really nice soldiers, and uh, matter of fact, actually almost everything worked out in our favor so far. So let's take a look at what we would be doing here. We got. Um, Zirkim, we got uh, Bones and Quick Feet on the mission, and I already mentioned that we wanted to take another soldier with us. Let's make all of the weapons and all of the nice utility items available. Quick Feet already has everything he needs, but we're putting a Skulljack in his hands. Um, with that, we hopefully can, um, uh, can start hitting the... Um, the advent officer. I'm a bit concerned about the lack of explosives, but Bones has at least um, a claymore with him, which should be okay. Other than that, we simply need to hit. And I think that's all there is to say about it. I'm considering whether or not we want a flashbang grenade, but that's a counter against the sectoids. It's also a nice counter against the codices if they really um, uh, will show up. So, yeah, maybe we're we're going uh, to keep it. If we play our cards right, we get an engineer and around 100 intel, which is fantastic. It'll put us back to the uh, good old uh, 200 intel, almost 200 intel uh, threshold. That's what where we want to be for now. And we still got a lot of uh, data pads um, in our hands, so we should be fine. Good, we got ourselves a, a VIP mission where we cannot just uh, leave this area. Rescue the Resistance Operative is one of the harder uh, missions. Basically got to get here, eliminate everyone in advance, and once we've done that, we uh, will need to hold our ground for a few rounds until reinforcements um, of Advent are going to show up. We got to kill those guys as to the best of our abilities, of course. And afterwards, we need to move to the evac zone. And that's really it. We got this nice little L-shaped um, sewer here with some high ground, which of course I'm interested in taking for us. But for now, let's play it nice and safe. There is no need to speed through this here. Everyone is concealed and well hidden. I am keenly, keenly aware of this, Bradford. Thank you for being so kind and in reminding us. You know, they could theoretically move down here. And I don't want to be spotted out, so let's just go over here. I don't want to lose concealment yet. That's a nice high ground here. And Zirkim can move into full cover as well. Do we have an Advent Officer? No, we do not. No, we do not. So. 
course, Lightning Hands would be a great option, but we're not going to do that yet. Instead, let's try and kill the Stun Lancer. Oh, very nice. That was a great first attack. Okay. Well, he hasn't been injured yet. So this is actually a bit better than 50-50 only. But I still think we should do it. We can regain our stealth. And this here will deal with a sector. Let's grab this first. Got a scope. That's okay. And quick feet moves in. Teaches the sector who's boss. I was hoping we wouldn't uh, reveal ourselves and partially I was also forgetting that we do not have Silent Killer yet. But that's fine. Whilst the concealment is absolutely fantastic at the beginning, we will need his damage output as time goes by. Good. Moving up and an overwatch of everyone. I can hear them. Right, they're back on the other side. Blocking the stairs just so that they can't move up. You can begins to move into a nice aggressive position. Moving up here so that we can overwatch. This is a tricky spot. You don't want to stand here because you don't have cover. As long as they don't move into us this turn, we should be fine. Of course, they are moving into us this turn. Worst possible timing. But we're lucky on the Overwatch. What isn't working super well is essentially dealing um, with a stun lancer so far. Eighty-five percent, only sixty-four percent. All right, so what's the deal? That would be a 100% kill. Let's soften up the Stun Lancer. I was hoping we might break his cover. Killing the trooper. Good job so far. I like it. Can't just move in the open, that would be suicidal. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Don't want to use the explosive yet. At the same time, I also don't want to take damage, so... Although it phenomenally sucks to use a shrapnel for one target, not even being able to capitalize on it, it's probably what we need to do. Now if you ask yourself, why am I not killing both of them with a shrapnel? Well, that's an excellent question that you ask. Um, the answer is we want to skull check, which... Apparently due to completely messed up um, cover, we can no longer do. Great. Blue movement. Can we see him? Yes, we can. Good. Let's skull check. That'll trigger the codex. And if we're lucky, we even get a bit of intel out of it. Of course, we're not. There we go. Not the end of the world. Uh, the Codex will, uh, anyways, teleport and will psionic bomb us. That's okay. Teleports into psionic bomb. Very nice. Okay, so good. We're moving out of the problematic area. We're using the flashbang as intended, which is making sure that the codex will. will not do anything that we would regret later, i.e. cloning itself. We're reloading, and that's the most damage that we can deal. Moving to here. And with that, we are a protocoling. Unfortunately, the psionic bomb has hit us quite well. Everyone, and I mean everyone, got hit. Could take a single shot. Don't want to lose our concealment here. So, no experiments, please. I will reposition. Repositioning, and I think we can't really kill it yet. So, we're likely going to take one shot. It might end up um, that Quick Feet will take another hit. Can't really change that. We've given him half cover. Oh, nice. Codex is overwatching. Well, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Reloading. Pistol shot would only uh, would only damage it mildly. So now is the perfect time for a teamwork. That will allow Zirkim to take a sniper shot, and that sniper shot might as well kill the Codex. Come on, Zirkim. Overwatch removed. Good. 
And I think we made the point on who's boss. Very nice. Good. No more enemies left over. Which means we do have an option to move in. I have no idea where the enemy might spawn. But one thing that I learned is, if you can take high ground, you might as well do so. So what we're going to do is, we're not triggering yet. Wow, that's a gigantic haul. Maybe one thing that we could do is, we could actually try to play from over here and from up here. I mean, we have a lot of agency if we were to stand up here. We can jump down. There is a lot of vision block, uh, blocking. We can even move all the way back into this tunnel here. I also don't know where the pickup zone is going to be. So that's another, I guess, disadvantage. Yeah, if we... If we start over here in the middle, that should be good to go. Quick feet moves up here. Zirkim holds his position over here. That should flank a lot of uh, the enemies. Good. Quick feed is not triggering anything yet. We'll get the VIP next turn. Antolio takes this position. This has a nice overview. We'll take this position for now, just to see if there are others coming in. Overwatch, Overwatch, reload, definitely. Cooldowns are ready. Do we have any remote startable object? Unfortunately, we do not have any remote startable object. No. Okay, so what's the best position? Probably one here at the windows. That'll allow us to oversee all of that area. And I do have a pretty bad feeling about this area. So this should trigger the VIP. Okay. Well, who would have thought that that's going to be an ambush, right? Okay, we are not going to get an overwatch from Bones, but what we could get is a nice position so that he could flank either of those guys next turn. Even better if he could do that in high ground, so we're going to take him over here. Unfortunately, the spawns were not optimal for his position. Quick feet definitely is going to overwatch. Antolio here is going to overwatch. And for Zirkim, yeah, yeah, the sniper overwatch is suboptimal because they will come in pretty close. So let's do a pistol overwatch. William moves back here. OK, 
Okay. If we play our cards right, um, the one pack here might even die. Holy shit, six points of damage. Good job, quick feed. Good effing job. Not a hundred percent sure what happened. We had an overwatch here. I'm not sure why that was would not trigger. He has taken a shot, but probably missed. Okay, maybe there wasn't an animation for it, but it certainly has happened. Good. We don't need to waste ammunition if we can just slice him. Could have reloaded beforehand, that was a small mistake. Always gotta play optimal if you can help it. Zia Kim could go over here and flank. The other option is a pretty solid shot and maybe even a chance to kill. Um, I would say... We're keeping our aid protocol for now. Reloading. And let's try to kill this trooper. There we go, good job. Now that brings us to... Yeah, that was stupid. I didn't want to use Zirkim. Not at all. I wanted to use the Reaper in order to scout. Well, now we do not have an Overwatch with him. That is unfortunate. Bones is still in cover, which on the one hand is great, on the other hand it's not so good. Pretty solid chance to kill him, I think we're going to take that chance. Not the worst, we've eliminated the first wave at the expense of being revealed. Not the turn that I wanted to play, but certainly an okay alternative. So we got two potential kills here, which is good. We're going to take one of them. Uh, a few more. Let's take the 84% um, and I would like to give Bones here the aid protocol because I think that he's going to require it. Unfortunately, not enough damage. We are charging into full cover to get rid of this guy. Could move into full cover here as well, which is probably almost a better position compared to the one that we had beforehand. Lightning Hands is on cooldown, but our pistol shot here will at least take good care. Everyone is now in full cover. If I was to position myself here, good chance of 
hitting him, if not killing. Could also move to here, try the same, or to here, or to here, which is probably the best bet that we have, because that's a non-flankable position and we have full cover. He could move all the way to here, but that would leave him exposed, which the AI is not going to do. Over here is fine, generally speaking, but he could move around and then flank us. Yeah, that's three to four points of damage. However, uh, if we're flanking him, uh, that will increase. Granted that we do have the aid protocol at the moment, I don't mind taking a chance. Good, we're going to take one shot. He does not get a he does not get a bonus for close proximity, which is why he's choosing to shoot at someone in half cover. I don't want to go too far into this direction because next turn we will get the reveal where we would need to go and I don't want to be left alone here. This is probably a kill. Very nice. Bones is just on fire. Moving up. Blanking position 100%. Not yet a killer. Okay. Zirkim becomes a real gunslinger. And quick feed over here just Runs from one trooper to another, killing them with a blade. Good, now it's time to leave this area. Okay, let's double check. So that's yeah, a yes, he can leave. That's a no, he just barely cannot leave. That's a yes. That's a yes. And that would be a yes. Any chance to get more movement speed? No. Moving a bit closer, let's try to kill the Advent Trooper. There we go, I still hit. Sierke no moves a bit closer. VIP already uh, leaves the area. And Bones is taking full cover. Quick feed goes into full cover and takes an overwatch as well. That way, we're having two overwatch shots. Not that I think we're going. Uh, that's going to um, be of much go uh, good use for us, but we'll at least have the chance to do something.
Is that a double move? It has been a double move. All right. Nice, Sir Kim just does not accept no for an answer, does he? It's alright buddy, you did more than your fair share of work. Bones gets out of here. And let's just get everyone out of here. I set a flawless mission. And we killed, I think, quite a few troops as well. 20. Yeah, that was okay. Good. Time for a landing. Let's hope for one or two promotions, shall we? Two promotions, that's great. Quick feet here. Gets that nice little sergeant um, promotion. We are going to take Shadow Step so that he does not trigger Overwatch fire anymore. That's great. And we got another Corporal. Good. Alien Encryption. And we got another engineer. Perfect. The aliens are relaying a form of encryption beyond anything. Let's finish the resistance radio because it is inspired. I just want to finish that real quick. The two days are fine. We are also using our next engineer so that we'll have enough room. And that should be it. That's with the alien encryption, we can build the shadow chamber. How long will alien encryption take, by the way? Nine days. Hmm. Let's speed that up. Um, resistance radio can be done afterwards. Even if we lose two days of research overall if we need to go back to it um, getting the shadow cha uh, shadow chamber earlier is definitely worth it very nice good so no supplies that we need to investigate on and there's the first alien facility Of course, so that happens just before the month ends. Good. We got a pretty, pretty solid month. Um, unfortunately, they are continuing to crack down and lowering our income, which stinks. But we'll, we'll eventually get through that. Risk on all covert actions, ambush on all covert actions, that's not a risk, that's actually a um, helpful option for us. The alloy padding slow, that would be nasty, so we don't want uh, that to happen. Get our second excavation here, and uh, our second uh, option here, and we're going to um, use resistance networks. Contact with new regions is made instantly. Uh, we're not expanding yet, uh, we don't have to. Matter of fact, by not expanding, matter of fact, by not expanding, we will force the once the shadow chamber is built, we will force the um, the gateway and uh, the other location to spawn even closer to our location, so they can spawn a maximum of three blips away. If we don't contact this area here, uh, they will need to spawn closer to our position which makes it easier for us and less intel intense to um, to figure out how to get there. Yeah, last time I got uh, the Codex Brain by 
doing uh, the facility uh, run, we don't need to do that right away. Uh, we can wait a tiny bit longer. Good. We got ourselves the Shadow Keeper, which is an excellent weapon. Given that we still have a few days until the alien encryption happens. By the way, let's empty this and optimize it really, really well. We're taking an engineer here. So four days. Uh, prior to alien encryption uh, finishing, we'll get the power relay so that we have everything in place to go immediately start the shadow chamber. Commander, we've just received intel that one of Dr. Wow, okay, yeah, we don't want to fight against an alien ruler at this time. No, thank you. Great. We got another room available for us. And by emptying this here as well, what we would get is five days until alien encryption is done and five days until the power relay is done, which you can see syncs up nicely. Uh, so let's continue excavating here. And let's actually speed up our covert ops missions. Yeah, I think that's the correct way to play it. We're okay with clearing alien debris, thanks to our resistance order. Uh, that's really fast at the moment. I'm trying to speed up the other um, items and the other items being we want to get Hunter's Axe, probably. Let's think about that. We're soon going to demolish this here and get a laboratory going. Yeah, that's the only other item that we really need. Once it's done, we're fine. Yeah, we got even less income now, which stinks, but I think we can still deal with it. Okay, Paul got another injury, but that's okay, uh, because we got our faction hero now and a new faction on top. Yeah, thank you for explaining all of that. With the Templars, um, well, uh, we are not only getting the faction hero, but if we continue making um, progress with them, we should be absolutely fine um, with having another slot there. Noble Cause and Trial by Fire is not too bad. So, double ability points gained in combat is helpful. And will recovery um, is helping us with uh, the tired soldiers being not as tired. I'm probably going to locate the third faction first. Getting an extra engineer could be helpful though. Combined with a promotion, it's not too bad. Here's the promotion as well, but it continues being a promotion, so that's not a problem. There is another promotion here for only eight days. Health plus one. Dodge plus ten. Well, that's good. But having an engineer plus a promotion, I think that that's pretty damn good. Whom would we promote, though? Hmm. We could put in Noxus and Quick Feet. And let Quick Feet get another promotion. 
I think that would not be a bad idea. That way we already get a captain. Plus we get an engineer out of it. And since they do have a bond, ah no, they don't have a level 2 bond. With level 2 bond they would even reduce the time by 1. So this here... This here wouldn't look too bad. The question is why would we put Dark Tower Noxus on, uh, in there? We can use him in any of the actual runs. Might as well take a no-name uh, specialist. Good. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Uh, I need the promotion and I also need another engineer, so... That's good. We will begin the covert action immediately, Commander. 11 days is a lot, but thankfully we're uh, speeding it up a bit. And it's worth it. The engineer would come prior to the end of uh, the supply run. Uh, we're mid of April. Okay, have I forgotten about anything? No. We got alien encryption in two days, which means we can start uh, moving on. Once the hunter's axe is um, done, we should be able to start, uh, to start the laboratory. Laboratory 175. And shadow chamber, I don't know. I think it was the same ballpark figure, but we're going to get um, supply spec once we're um, decommissioning the proving grounds. Okay, let's move on. Commander. And we got a supply drop as well, so we should be fine. As soon as possible. The aliens are undoubtedly moving nice, so that's the Hunter's X, which means we are pretty much done with uh, the proving ground. I like the idea of go uh, getting more here because there are really a few nice items. Um, even sparks can be super helpful because they are sturdy um, and they can be sent onto missions over and over and over. We do have a few cores as well, so wouldn't have um, hurt to get uh, the imme uh, immediate uh, finalization of grenades, ammunition, heavy weapon, whatever. Yeah, we can't choose uh, though. I definitely want to make sure that we're not failing this time so proving grounds must go and instead of proving grounds we are going to build a laboratory 20 more days then the laboratory will be completed which is good because it means uh, we got a lab running for the entirety of May, the entirety of June and half of July, essentially giving us two additional scientists. Yeah, we don't have a training center. That's too bad. The bond upgrade really would have helped, but training center is something that is not going to work for us. Got a Corporal Grenadier here. And yeah, I mean, that's not the perfect reward, but it's a Grenadier, so who cares? Got a lot of beast-like creatures. Uh, that's most likely um, going to be faceless ones. Perfect option for us um, to get some Mimic Beacons. The other beast creatures could be berserkers. No, it's too early. Yeah, it's just faceless ones at this point. Vipers don't count as beasts. The outcome of this research can only further our advantage, Commander. Shadow Chamber. Let's, for now, resume with resistance radio. And then soon plated uh, armor will drop in. Build a shadow chamber. Oh, 
We are going to do that. Don't worry. Shadow Chamber, 200 supplies. Oh, we can get that. We can do that. Okay, got our laboratory uh, going. The power relay is soon going to solve our power issues. And we got to get 40 more supplies, which is going to be pretty easy. Holy shit. Yeah, we're not going to sell that. But I am perfectly willing to sell a stock for 22. Just a few trooper corpses. We need more uh, to upgrade our armor afterwards. Nope, we're not selling either of those. Uh, can sell one priest. Maybe two sectored corpses. Mind shields are great, but also expensive. One officer corpse. I think we're okay on the Larium crystals. If they would be wanted, uh, I would sell them for 10 a pop. Larium cores, one can be sold. Because we are not having a proving ground anymore. And that should be plenty. Got enough to outfit the team. Which brings us to the last question. Whom are we going to send on the next mission? We do have Hayward available. Bones. We got Renman available. And we got Hogbite here. Hell yeah, Hogbite is back, baby. I'd like to see that. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to take Hogbite with us, and the rest should be good to go. Specialist Reaper, Specialist Reaper, Grenadier, and the Templar should be definitely a good match. Anyways, thank you for watching. I um, enjoy the run a lot so far. It's definitely going in our favor. Hope you like it as well. If you do so, um, please uh, do me a favor and just subscribe plus leave a comment down below. Today's question is going to be which weapon do you prefer? I'd like to hear uh, your opinion about uh, what your favorite weapon is. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.